very much and um, thanks very much uh, to all of you for being here today and it's a great pleasure to be able to speak with you. Um, so uh, my name is Shane Garrett, I am a senior economist with the Australian Housing Industry Association and just by way of giving you background and as to who I represent, we represent um, 40,000 members right across Australia in all parts of the country, um, everything from large developers to very small operators in the building space, you know, people who <coughs> might operate on their own as renovators and so forth. Um, now going back to the topic of today, how do we ensure that Canberra's future housing needs can be met? Um, they say that when you ask an Irish man a question, he'll give you three questions back, so who might deviate from that stereotype? Um, what the, the lines, I think this question should be addressed along relate, one, to the price and to the cost of new homes. Are houses too expensive? Are houses too cheap? Some people would say, you know, some people like to see the prices of housing going up, believe it or not. The other thing is the quantity. How many houses do we actually need to build every year to meet the demands of the long term so as to ensure that everybody can get the house they need at reasonable cost. And the final question to ask is, what type of houses do we need to build? You know, traditionally Australia and Canberra has been a detached house market. The Aussie dream of having a house with a plot of land in the back of backyard to play footy in and all of that. That's always been the dream. But over the last two decades, the mix of housing in the city here has changed from being dominated by de detached house building to more and more apartments and high rise. And the other issue to explore is, how do we ensure that the types of houses and the types of dwellings <coughs> people want are actually delivered upon by government and, and industry in the long term? So just in, in terms of addressing each of those three subheadings, I suppose, here's a few little facts for you, right? The average house price in Canberra at the moment, according to the latest figures in April 2018, is 685 thousand dollars. Now, reverse the clock back 15 years to 2003, the average house price was just $302, less than half of where it is now, and go back 25 years to April of 1993, and we're talking $150,000 for a typical home in this city. So the price of housing has exploded hugely. It's outgrown prices and it's outgrown wages. And the question is, why? And the other question is, is that good or bad? I would argue that it's a bad thing. It makes um, houses for first home buyers more difficult to access. And it pushes home ownership further and further away from more and more young people. What are the solutions? What can be the solutions? Well, first, here's, a few, here's just a few facts for you to consider. Um, our own research has shown that taxation of one form or another typically accounts for between 33% and 44% of the ticket price of a new home, for example. So is tax too high? The other issue relates to land and land supply. Is the government releasing enough land in Canberra? Is the government holding back on land supply? Um, some, some estimates suggest that the per square metre price of land in Canberra is now about $1,000, which is one of the highest in the whole country after Sydney. You know, what's the government doing here? Is the government doing the right thing in terms of housing affordability? Or is the government trying to ensure that house prices keep going up to please all of those that are homeowners around the city? The other angle on this, of course, is how can we ensure that the how types of houses people want ma is matched by what is actually built on the ground and is the planning system getting in the way of turning people's wants into reality in the city here? Is the planning system getting in the way? In other words, if people want high-rise apartments, for example, if that's the type of home they'd like to live in and if that's what their budget constraint dictates, does the planning system allow for that amount of apartments, for example, to be built in the city? Um, the, the final angle, perhaps, for you guys to consider 
is that we know that the free market doesn't work perfectly and that there's always market imperfections and sometimes the market doesn't do a very good job. So public housing, the government has a role to play there. Is that you? I think there's a phone up here. Um, public housing, just to give you some figures again, I, I, this is all included in my handout, which I think... Um, You've got about a minute given. left. Yeah. Public housing, uh, back in 1997, 20 years ago, accounted for 6.6% of all new homes built in the ACT. 10 years after that, it had fallen to 5.2%, and in last year, in 2017, public housing accounted for just 1.9% of all new homes built. Is that too low? It seems like it is, by historic standards. Should the government be doing more to match the needs of housing in certain areas? So there I'll leave it. Those, those are the, uh, so I've managed to turn one question I think, into three questions. But those are the three aspects, I think, that this issue should be addressed upon. One, the price of housing, is it too high or too low, and why? Two, how much homes need to be built to accommodate Canberra's future population growth and future demands for housing. And third, are the type of houses that we build the same as what people actually want to be built? So thank you very much. And You're a star. To Perfect.